Baby, my name is Ross Mandel and welcome to the show today. I'm coming to you live from Mammoth Studios in a very chilly Boca Raton, Florida. I'm coming to you today uncut. I'm unedited, unfiltered, uncensored. And as my lawyer and the judge keep reminding me, I am. <laughs> I am still under arrest. Yeah, it's so good to be back here today to see everybody, and I've just been so long since I've got up in front of the camera and got a chance to say hey and do my thing. Uh, firstly, I got up this morning, I put on a, a, a sweatsuit, and I went to open the door at about 6 a.m. to let my dogs out. I have four dogs, and they t went up to the door, they turned around to look at me and were like, Daddy, what are you kidding? <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> I'm going to piss in the house today. Forget it. Yes, it's true. Today, this morning, December 7, 2010, it was 37 degrees on the thermometer in Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> wow. Yes, even my nipples were hot. <laughs> I could have cut glass today. It was so cold when I got out of that bed. I mean, we actually put heat on in Florida. I mean, we do this like twice a year, you know, at most. I'm probably exaggerating by, by 100%, but I tell you, it's so cold, and they said tonight could be even colder, so what am I going to say? As you heard from me moments ago, I, uh, I announced a date, which I don't often do, and uh, generally, I'm not, I'm not often aware uh, when I come in front of the camera, the exact date, but today, it's a very interesting day, yes, December the 7th, 2010. Some of you are looking at this and going, well, what's so special about December 7th? <laughs> but those of you that grew up in my generation would listen to FDR, that famous tape that said, December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. And then, you know, black and white shots of, of Japanese planes bombing ships in Pearl Harbor. Yes, 1941, today, Pearl Harbor, which was American mil uh, naval bases, uh, uh, in Hawaii, subject to attack from the Japanese fleet, the, uh, the fleet in the Pacific, their whole Navy, their Air Force, uh, actually brought us in to World War II, which really helped America to become a great nation. And my father fought in World War II for this country. You know, he fought in the Philippines, and he was, uh, he was in the first wave of guys that was scheduled to invade Japan when a guy named Harry S. Truman... Yes, President Harry S. Truman, he made a very presidential decision. He knew that between 100,000 and 250,000 American soldiers would get killed in the first wave attacking Japan, trying to, you know, possess Japan. He, uh, he gave the green light to the United States military to drop the first ever atomic bombs on Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. When my father hit the beaches in Japan, he should have been killed. They were written off, those guys. The first wave and wave and wave. It's the way it is, casualties of war. Make a long story short, there were no Japanese for 20 miles. To them, this was almost like a religious, cathartic situation. A mushroom cloud, people's faces melting, utter death and destruction from the sky, from the gods, who knows? You know, and... Uh, Oh, what a, what a horrible uh, thing to bring up, but Harry S. Truman, my father used to say, you wouldn't be alive if not for Harry S. Truman. What an incredible, incredible leader he was. What a tough decision that was to make. But, you know, we saved hundreds of thousands of American lives and set the stage for America, you know, unfortunately for many, but to become a great nation. And, you know, that leads me, <laughs> what a perfect segue that is. Because somewhere between December 7th, 1941 and December 7th, 2010, we went from being a very serious, you know, very together, responsible, serious nation to becoming a little bit of a friggin' joke, just a water cooler joke. Now, <laughs> I don't say that lightly. Let me just say that on Sunday night, two days ago, Ben Bernanke was interviewed. 
about his new policy, okay? And uh, some of my fans, some of my supporters, some of the people that follow me and my various antics have been phoning to me information and literature and whatnot. And I received this uh, fantastic email today, uh, written by a very intelligent person, and he writes, Bernanke's arrogance is both stunning and frightening. His 100% confidence factor in removing QE while guaranteeing no more than 2% inflation is sheer lunacy. Goes on to say, Bernanke missed the tech bubble, the housing bubble. He missed the debt bubble. Never once expressed any concern that there were systemic issues. He's an academic. He's clueless. And he thinks that he could print trillions of dollars, of American dollars, flood the system with no consequences. Even I know that stupidity. Could you imagine the stupidity this guy gets on te national television and says, I'm 100% sure. He's a moron. He's missed every single Every single bubble, every explosion, the reason we're in this mess is because of guys like this that have no real-life practical experience. He's a puppet representing some unknown, uh, unknown party or group to their benefit, and it's disgusting, everybody. You know, risk doesn't exist. Risk is not a four-letter word. Cash is. Now, the government, the Fed, Ben Bernanke believes that he can just print money, and there's no consequences. As I came to this uh, studio today, Mammoth Studios in Boca Raton, it's currently 10 to 3, gold was trading up to an all-time high, over $420, dollars $1,420 an ounce, I'm sorry. Oil was over $90 a barrel. Interest rates were moving up. I'm going to tell you something. The stock market's moving up. NASDAQ's at a three-year high. It, unemployment is a 20-year high. What, what's going to give? What's going to give? The economy sucks. We're still in a housing crisis. We're still in a banking and foreclosure crisis. The price of our commodities has gone crazy. You know what it's going to cost to heat your home this winter? To drive your car? $90 a barrel and he's not doing or saying anything. Gold over $1,400. Silver, copper, cotton. Every commodity going to all-time highs. Not not short-term highs like the stock market, all-time highs. This is an all-time disaster coming, and I just don't believe that we have a moron in office that's missed every major negative event in the new millennium telling us he's 100% sure of anything. Because I'm not 100% sure of anything. That makes me smarter than this guy. Well, the Fed thinks they could just print all this money. <laughs> that leads me into my next piece. The lovely Mrs. Mandel has forwarded me a fantastic story, which is just pathetic and makes my blood boil. The flawed new $100 bill. It's a $110 billion headache. Okay, this is the, uh, the Bureau of Engraving. <laughs> they print it up. 1.1 billion brand new $100 bills. 1.1 billion <laughs> bills. That's $110 billion worth, in case any of you uh, fail third grade math. I just want to say that after a long investigation, the Federal Reserve now acknowledges an issue. <laughs> there was a suspicion of an issue. Now there's an issue. There's a flaw in the bills, making them unusable. So they're being stored in warehouses between Texas and Washington. I suppose it doesn't cost a lot of money to stand around and protect $110 billion dollars in flawed $100 bills that nobody knows what the hell to do about. The flaw, <laughs> a problem with sporadic creasing of the paper, results in small blank spaces. <laughs> Can you imagine the stupidity and the lunacy of this government? You know, 
The Bureau of Engraving and Printing, they did testing so they could be sure the notes would run correctly. Unfortunately, the creasing problem did not reveal during the testing. They say it's very difficult to detect. Well, I guess that means that Crane and Company, who supplies the paper, is going to get more business sent their way. Because the first 1.1 billion notes that they produced it just don't work. <laughs> we got to go back to the drawing board. Could you imagine what it costs to print, to engrave, to guard, to monitor, I mean, to inventory all this money and all this stuff, and then to find out that it's bad not till after you print 1.1 billion bills? That's a lot of bills, guys. I mean, you know, we're talking $110 billion in paper money. I mean, what is that, a $5 billion error? I mean, more? Someone's got to stand guard over it. God forbid this gets into circulation now. What the hell is going on in Washington, D.C.? Who the hell is in charge of this kind of stuff? I mean, there's nobody running anything in our government. I got to tell you, it's a sad, sad day. On a day like today, December 7th, we should be proud as a nation. We should be together as a nation. We, I mean, what an accomplishment we did. We beat the Japanese in the Pacific after they destroyed most of our fleet and our Navy. We beat the Germans in Europe and in Germany. I mean, you know, Cold War stuff. We, we survived Russia in the Cold War. They took the war down in East Germany in our lifetime. Ronald Reagan, the last great leader we had in this country. So I just want to say, what the hell is going on? We need leaders to emerge. What is this? I mean, about two months ago, we talked about the stimulus. They sent tens of millions of dollars to dead people. <laughs> what a surprise they couldn't stimulate the economy because dead people are not spending a lot of money now. Are they? Maybe in Washington they are. I don't know anywhere else. So what am I going to say? Freezing cold day in Boca. I got love and warmth and spirit in my heart. What the hell the, 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 the bureaucrats and the, and the politicians are doing? I don't know. This Ben Bernanke scares the hell out of me. Because anybody that's 100% sure of anything has got something very wrong with them or is taking some really good medication that I probably could use. My name is Ross Mandel. That's double S and double L. I have a website. That's RossMandel.com. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> That's Ross Mandel. Again, double S, double L. Friend me. We're getting up to that limit soon. And uh, as you know, many of you, I have a personal email, and that is Ross at RossMandel.com. What would I do without you people feeding me all this fantastic information? What a privilege it is to be here today and share all this with you. Everybody have a happy and healthy holiday season, and I'll be back to talk to you guys again tomorrow. Thank you.